All right, we're gonna figure out how to get Easy Drummer installed uh, and working with Reaper. Uh, actually, not quite the installation, but actually how to get Reaper to detect uh, where Easy Drummer is installed. So I'm working in Windows 10 here. Uh, things might be slightly different for you if you're on an uh, older version of Windows, uh, Windows 7 or 8, but for Windows 7 and more recent, you should be able to just click on the start menu on the little start button down here. Uh, we'll click on that and I'm just going to start typing EZ. I'll just type EZ. And actually that's the uh, the first result that comes up. So I'm going to click on Easy Drummer, which is the standalone version. It's not the VST or anything. This is just the, the standalone app for Easy Drummer. I'm going to open it up. Wait for it to come up here. Okay, great. So in Easy Drummer, it has a very handy little thing here. If you click on Help, the one option under Help is Show Plugin Path. This is great because this tells you where you installed the VST plugin when you installed Easy Drummer. So for me, it's C Program Files, VST Plugins, Tune Track, Easy Drummer DLL. Okay, great. Unfortunately, we can't just copy that. It would have been nice if they would have added a ability to just go ahead and copy that to your clipboard but let's go ahead and just track that path down just to make sure the DLL actually lives there so for me in Windows 10 I'm gonna just go to File Explorer I keep it on my uh, quick launch bar here but I think in uh, Windows 7 I think it was still called Windows Explorer uh, in Windows I think it was in 8 and 10 it went to File Explorer so either way let's just type E-X-P-L-O-R-E-R. -E so we get Internet Explorer, but we also get File Explorer, and I think on the older versions you'll get Windows Explorer. Click on that guy. Alright, uh, older versions of Windows, I think this will be called uh, this computer, or my computer, or just computer. In Windows 10 they call it this PC. So that path name that we just saw in Easy Drummer was C, it was Program Files, for me, it was VST plugins, and then Tune Track, and then there's EasyDrummer.dll. Great. So I think in all your versions of Windows, you should be able to up on this address bar here, which shows you where you're currently at. You should just be able to click in blank space over here somewhere, and it'll turn it into a nicely formatted path name and highlight it for you. So just right-click on that, copy it. Great. Let's go back to Reaper. So in Reaper, uh, we've got to tell it where that path name is so it knows to look for DLLs there. So you go to Options, you go all the way down to Preferences, and under Preferences you scroll down to close to the bottom under Plugins. You got VST, and under the VST thing here you've got this window that has a whole lot of different well for for me I've been working with Reaper for a while added a lot of plugins so I've got a whole bunch of different uh, uh, path names here so if you, you can just kinda click in here somewhere I'm gonna hit the end key to just go to the end of the list I'm gonna type a semicolon and just for the heck of it a space and then I'll do a control V to paste in that path name that we just copied from File Explorer. So uh, all, all you have to do is um, tell it, rescan. Well, actually, what happens if we hit Add here? Oh, that lets you actually browse to that location. So if you don't want to do the copy paste thing, you can just browse to where your plugins live. Uh, so I I added my uh, which is this is already in here for me. I've been using Tune Track stuff for a while, so. I'm sure in this big long path name somewhere I've already got this added. But you can hit rescan and that will go ahead and scan all the path uh, uh, locations that you have listed here. And so now Easy Drummer should show up as a virtual instrument. I'll go ahead and hit OK here. So over here on the track window if I just right click somewhere and it says insert virtual instrument on new track so I'll click that and I will look for Easy Drummer hopefully for you now Easy Drummer will show up here I'll go ahead and uh, double click on it 
and it'll actually ask me, do you want to build the multi-track output? And that basically means, do you want to build all the tracks it would take if you wanted to send each individual microphone from the drum set to its own track? Or do you just want a stereo output? Uh, if you want to get a little fancy, add different effects and, you know, compression and reverb and things like that. Uh, uh, or if you just want to simply mix the kit pieces with Reaper's faders, then say yes. But if you want to just leave it, uh, and, you know, if this is just a scratch project or you don't want to mess with it, you can just say no. And it will simply add a stereo track and all of Easy Drummer's outputs will output to that. I'm going to tell it yes here. So it brings up Easy Drummer as a VST plugin. And you can see that it added all these tracks here. Unfortunately, they're not very well named because it doesn't yet know what microphone or what kit piece you're going to route to these different outputs. Uh, later on, we'll rename these to so they'll be a little more intuitive as you're mixing. You're, you want to turn the kick up or turn the kick down or, or turn the overheads up or the overheads down. Uh, it's, it's a little harder to guess, well, was the kick easy one or easy four? Or It's kind of nice just to come in here, double click on one of these and name it something more intuitive. We'll get to that here in a sec. All right, so we got this multi-track routing going on. But now, if we actually play something through uh, Easy Drummer, I tried this a little uh, a little earlier, and I had to do this one extra step. Normally, you can just pick up, you know, if you go to the search or browser, whatever, uh, you should be able to just click and hold and drag one of the, you know, you can you can see that once you pick one of these things up, it actually turns into a little MIDI file. You should be able to just drop that over here, but for some reason it just disappears on me. I don't know if that's a, a recent thing or what. But what I found is that you can just grab it, drop it down here in the uh, song builder. And that turns it into a little MIDI file. Uh, you can leave it here. You can build your whole song down here if you want. Personally, I prefer to build it in the piano roll of Reaper. So you can grab it from here, drop it into Reaper. There you go. So at this point, you know, you can just close Reaper or uh, close Easy Drummer. Let's just uh, grab the edge of this and drag it out for a couple minutes. There, a whole bunch of repetitions of some basic drum pattern. Uh, I'm going to hit play here and let's see if we get sound. Oh, it's loud. Let's turn that down. Oh, everything is coming through easy one. So let's eh, turn that down a little. Okay. A little less clipping. Yeah, that was loud. Okay, so let's let's put it at a comfortable volume where we can hear what we're doing. I'll put it about minus six. But you can tell now that all of the pieces of the kit are all coming through just one of these multi-channels. So Now's when we gotta we gotta put in a little bit of work here. So let's go back to Easy Drummer. If we go to the mixer, uh, Tune Track is really good about this. It, it kind of works the same in Superior Drummer as well. So uh, here on the mixer, on each channel, uh, this very bottom box here, right above the the channel name, it has a channel number, and so you can see all of these are set to one. And so that's why all of these are being output through this EZ1 uh, uh, track over here. So let's say we want the kick. Okay, yeah, kick, uh, we'll keep that at output 1. The snare, let's send it through output 2. Hi-hat, let's send it through 3. And actually there's an easier way to do this. You can click on it and you can say multi-channel. And that automatically sends each of these to what it considers is the best kind of output. So uh, it might put, so like all your toms here are on one channel. Um, did it actually pick the same channel for anything? I don't see that it did here. Yeah, yeah. So now if we press play, oh geez, this is going to be loud again. Okay, to avoid that, this is something I always do. Let me come down here to empty space. I'm going to double click to create a new track. 
I'm going to double click in the namespace here. I'm going to call it drum folder. I kind of like having one master volume to control all my drum volume. So even though I can mix each kit piece individually, I like to have a master. All right, so I just all I did there is uh, click and hold and drag that folder, that new track, up to the top. I'm going to click on this little thing here. Uh, if I click on it once, it's going to say, okay, this track is a folder. Uh, one thing you have to do as a corollary to that is scroll down to the very last one and tell it that, and you click on it once, it says, okay, this is a folder. Anything that was below this would now belong to EZ16. We don't want that. Click on it one more time, and now it says track is last track in folder. So now if there's another track below here, it no longer belongs to this drum folder. It uh, will just be alongside it. The good thing about folders is that once you've done all your mixing, you can click on this little down triangle thing here, and you can cycle through a couple of different sizes for all of the different children of that folder. And you click on it again, they get really teeny tiny, just enough to give you a meter. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open that back up. I am going to take this drum folder and I'm going to attenuate it by about 12 dB for right now. All right, so now if I click play, check that out. We've got, so here, let me uh, solo this. Hey, it's just the kick. This one, hey, it's just the snare with a little bit of bleed from the kick. Good. So what's this one? Sounds like a hi-hat. So between this mixer window, whoops, come on back. Between this mixer window and these track names here, you can pretty much figure out what to name each of these tracks. So if I stop that, I'm actually getting a little bit of distortion in my headphones here coming from Easy Drummer. I don't hear it right there, but I did, so hopefully it doesn't come through in the recording here. All right, so, you know, for this one, I'll double click in here. I'll call this kick. This one, I'll double click. I'll call snare. Uh, what you can't see right now is my mixer window. Let me drag that over here. This is what I keep on my other monitor. But now this starts to make a little bit more sense. So now I have a fader for my kick. I have a fader for my snare. Uh, and then you you just kind of go through all these uh, different channels here. Name, take the names from here, name them how you want over here on your mixer channel, and it's a great way to actually have good control over all of your drum pieces. All right. Well, hey, hopefully that at least gets you off the ground uh, with using Easy Drummer in Reaper. And uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or uh, if you have any suggestions or anything like that. All right? Thanks. Later, guys.